in Texas, the great warm-up begins. And we're not out of the woods because rising temperatures mean that pipes will unthaw and any water pressure in the lines will start flooding buildings. And from what I'm hearing, structural damage across the state is extensive. My guess is the damage toll will be north of 20 billion. And I'm not sure what we're looking at as far as loss of life and injuries. But at least now we can begin down the road of repairing the damage. Here's the map across the U.S. this Friday afternoon. Definitely looks quite a bit warmer compared to the beginning of the week. We're seeing the freezing line working its way up into Oklahoma and also through Kentucky and looks like just north of Virginia. So that cold air is on the retreat as we see modification of that old Arctic air mass. It has bolted down into Mexico. We can see it right through that gap there in the mountains. Winds gusty through that region. So Mexico getting a little bit of inclement weather and upslope on the east coast. Back in the U.S., we're seeing the appearance of the Plateau High over the western Colorado region, which means very cold nights and mild days. We're also seeing the lee side trough get established along the Rocky Mountains from Alberta down through Wyoming and Colorado. And with that, we're going to see mild temperatures along the high plains. Up to the north, the Arctic air is slowing down, weakening, although we still do see temperatures of minus 40. That air is not going to be going anywhere because the high pressure is down to the south, low pressure to the north, and that means the flow is going to be generally from south to north, keeping that Arctic air trapped up there in the high Arctic. The heights and vorticity chart across North America showing the large long wave trough set up in North America and within that these smaller scale waves. One major one associated with the Arctic air outbreak over the Midwest putting the Northeast under this area of potential upward motion. We also have this negative tilt trough out over the Pacific with the jet max descending down the backside. The polar front jet running pretty much like that right there. And the polar vortex is back in its usual habitat in northern Baffin Island. And we can see over the next week we've got a progressive pattern setting in. Major trough coming into California Saturday and moving into the Great Plains on Sunday. Most of the energy will be in northern Texas, Oklahoma, and Missouri. Some ridging back in behind that. Then the next trough descends into the central plains on Wednesday and Thursday. A quick look at the surface map this afternoon shows the moderating patterns. We saw lows in the teens across much of Texas and were above freezing in most places. Only Wichita Falls hanging on at 32 degrees. And out to the west we can see the Southerly flow starting to set up with 40s and 50s showing up. Rapid warm-up, and that's going to gradually spread into North Texas over the next day. A quick look elsewhere around the country. We've got a stagnant air mass in the southwestern U.S., but it is warm with 66 at Phoenix and 68 at Tucson. Also pretty quiet in California, though as we go north, we get close to a new frontal system coming on shore. Where exactly is that? Well, we can check out the GFS. And we do see a thermal gradient in that region. As we step forward, you can see it tightening up a bit as the next system comes on shore right there around Eureka. Now the general flow is running from north to south. So it does become a little bit challenging where to put the fronts. We know for sure that the cold front is going to be running about like that. The warm front, not as clear in this northwesterly flow. So we might put it like that this evening. And then further back, probably the warm front running something like that right there. Looking elsewhere on the pressure and thickness chart, 
The frontal boundary is well to the south in the Gulf of Mexico. And in the eastern U.S., it's primarily offshore, except for these occlusions up there in the Great Lakes. Cold air advection flowing into that part of the country. And then on the other side of that high pressure and ridge, you can see the warm air advection working up through the high plains into the Dakotas. And as the ridge moves to the east over the next 24 hours, that will widen out that warm air advection zone. And we'll see a significant warm-up in Texas this weekend. I know some of you are tired of the focus on Texas, but we're going to take one last look before this snow burns off. This is the original snow band from pretty much Sunday night into Tuesday. And down south, this is the new snow band from yesterday morning. And you're going to see that southern snow band rapidly disappear as we get the significant warm-up down in that region. And that leaves us with this in the late afternoon. Looks like the majority of the snow runs from about Temple up through Kaufman, Tyler, and Greenville, right in that band there. There's a look at California with the new frontal system fast approaching. Looks like moisture trapped in the valleys right there from Sacramento northward. And we see some convective instability over the coastal range. Cloudy conditions in Portland, Seattle. Looks like a warm air advection pattern in place and plenty of moisture in the lower, mid, and upper levels. Pretty quiet in the central plains, but we've got those strong westerlies starting to take hold. Significant warm-up and looks like quite a snowfield across Nebraska. Florida is now dealing with that front that's affected much of the country. And we see an arc cloud running from just south of Cape Canaveral down towards the Fort Myers area. Looks like a lot of the convection is forced, but up to the north we see some deeper convection over the Atlantic Ocean and Gulf Stream waters. And back in behind it, you can see the cold air advection stratus, cold air advection stratocumulus along the coast. That's that cold air picking up moisture and becoming unstable in the lowest part of the troposphere. Some of that even going on over the land areas in northern Florida and southern Georgia. And there's a look at the northeast U.S. Looks like a lot of extensive white. So what do we, what do we turn to? Well, we can look at some of the multispectral products. A good one is the day cloud phase. And that'll divide the layers up a little bit better. You can see over the Atlantic, we've got the higher ice crystal clouds. And out to the west, supercooled water, which indicates layers of low and mid cloud. Not a lot to talk about today, which is a good thing. So let's take a look at the forecast sequence and see what we got going on over the next week. We do have a couple of waves which are going to be moving across the western and central U.S. Those are going to appear in the data, and you can see one wave right there making its way across the Great Basin area. This is tomorrow, about midday. So that's going to be moving into Texas around Sunday. There's that front right there, and the warm air advection region, the warm front, moving across Kansas, and that'll produce some snow in Nebraska, the I-70 corridor, and as far south as possibly Wichita. And as we go through Sunday, that wave continues moving to the east, moving into Illinois, Indiana, and Kentucky. So that's moving pretty quickly and steadily, and it ends up in the northeast U.S. early on Monday. So we're expecting snow there in Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and upstate New York. The next wave appears in the data there on Monday, affecting Washington, Oregon, and then moving across the Great Basin area as a cold front. There it is coming south on Tuesday morning, ends up in the Four Corners area early on Wednesday, and then takes aim on the Great Plains around Thursday or Friday. So the fronts are going to be looking like this. 
That's it right there. And you can see that a lot of that precip is back behind the front in an area of 850 millibar overrunning. So we're looking at early Thursday here. So that's going to mean snow for the panhandles and Oklahoma, but probably not very much until it gets into the Ozarks. South of there, probably enough moisture for some thunderstorms. We're still working that out to see how much coverage we're going to get. But that's looking to be Thursday or Friday in the southeast U.S. And as it picks up even more moisture, some heavy snow being forecast there in Virginia and West Virginia. And cold air advection affecting mostly that part of the country. Here comes the next system in California there on Friday. That's another southern track system, and that'll make it into the southern plains the following weekend, around the 27th. And at that point, we get to the end of the accuracy of the GFS, but it does look like some more cold air coming south. Not quite as severe as what we saw earlier this week, but that will bring down temperatures a little bit across the central U.S., and especially the Midwest. So we're looking at the 28th, through the 2nd of March for that. And that's all for this edition of Forecast Lab. I hope you all have a great evening and a great weekend, of course. Keep in mind, Monday is the supporter video. And if you're a supporter, you're going to get the private video that airs on Monday. A notification goes to your mailbox. And quite possibly, the Monday videos are going to have a studio camera so you can see what actually goes on here when we do the videos. Of course, some of you may not want to see it. Sometimes it's better to enjoy the program the way you always have with just the maps. But if you want to see a little bit more, become a supporter. And here's how. Here's the Patreon link. That will get you all set up. And a special thanks to our newest supporters, Philip Burns and Andrew Heron. Your contributions are greatly appreciated. Okay, until next time, have a good one. Bye-bye.